search for us on social media. We're on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Uh, I think it's time. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. It's time to mix it up. Hey, dumbass. Oh, me? Use your smartphone and download our free iPhone and Android app to take us with you. Uh, okay. Can you please get off my lawn? Located in an underground bunker somewhere in Madison, Indiana, is a different kind of podcast. Welcome to Loudmouth with your host, Dean Stidham. And I'd like to welcome everyone to Loudmouth. Also, uh, we're going to be uh, simulcasting today. For the first time on WLOU Radio, so I'd like to welcome our new listeners as well as our old listeners. Joining me today is uh, Stacy Chilliam. Uh, now, Stacy is a popular and recognizable health and lifestyle reporter and expert columnist and health host, author of The Complete Guide to Natural Healing, along with 20 other published books. Stacy is the founder of The Complete Herbal Guide the complete thermal guide.com if you want more information which is currently and has over 350,000 monthly visitors stacy has been a guest on numerous lifestyle and health related tv and radio programs and is a recognized health and natural remedies expert with over 20 years in practice as a health coach stacy has been a guest on the dr oz show local news and numerous radio shows and easy for me to say hey stacy welcome and uh, how are you doing today I'm doing well, and yourself? Doing real good for a poor man. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you can't relate to that, can you? Um, I'm doing okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> trying my best, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> okay, we won't get into that. Stacy. if you can, you have such an interesting story. I know you've probably told it many, many times, but if you will, share it with the listeners uh, how this all began. Well, I developed epilepsy at the age of five, and I struggled all my life um, with um, with seizures. And as I got older, um, I was in um, I was in college, and I was struggling a lot because um, you know the late night study and, and the stress of school and trying to do well. And my seizures weren't doing too well. And I had written a letter um, to the Epilepsy Foundation asking others to share their stories with me, how they um, cope with epilepsy, how they deal with it, and how they get on with life. And um, they published the, um, the article um, and the, the letter I had wrote. And I got hundreds of letters from all over the United States and Canada from people sharing their story with me, sharing their advice, and and just the, it was just it was heart heartwarming. And um, as you know, I was so encouraged by that that I actually started writing a book, and that was my actual first book, um, Epilepsy: You're Not Alone. And then, as as time went on, um, I had. Uh, had done a lot of uh, freelance work, and I had come across, I met an herbalist, and he had me do a lot of research, and I was doing a lot of research, and I was actually finding a lot of it interesting, and a lot of it was applying to myself, and I started to um, change my lifestyle, change the way I ate, I added supplements to my diet, I started detoxing, and my seizures went from nine seizures a month to five to four to three to two and to none, and you know, my seizures were becoming controlled, and I was, uh, you know, I was so outstanding, you know, I, I was stunned by this, and I, I started a little website, my blogger, many years ago, like over 10 years ago, and I started um, sharing a lot of, you know, I started writing articles, and I started writing, um, I started doing research, and I started putting this stuff on, on Blogger, and I, I went um, from 400 visitors to 10,000 visitors, and then I created my own website, and the, the website grew to actually have over 350,000 monthly visitors today that come on, and I talk about health, and talk about sleep, and talk about, um, you know, vitamins, and supplements, and how, you know, the natural way of life could actually, you could actually heal your body naturally, and you don't always have to resort to medication. Wow, what an interesting story. Now, you had your first Seizure at what age again? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. You had your first uh, seizure again at what age? Age five. I had my first age seizure. five. Okay. Now with this, uh, did you have an EEG done to show you know the brain waves were they abnormal or were they normal or did this come into play at all? 
Um, to this day, they're abnormal. Uh, what happened was is uh, I started out with a little uh, virus and, a, and an ear infection, and then one day my mom heard a noise from the other room, and she came in and she saw me in a grand mal seizure, and then I had went into a coma for four days. And um, I had been hospitalized, and when I came out of the coma, um, they thought I was going to be paraplegic or they thought I was going to have severe brain damage. And I came out, and the first thing I asked for was McDonald's French fries. But during that time, they had done a lot of tests, and they found that um, I had encephalitis that had traveled through the brain that had caused scar tissue damage. To this day, they can't find the scar tissue damage, but because of the scar tissue damage, um, I have the seizures. Well, that's that's a pretty amazing story. I guess you're a very uh, lucky, uh, at that time, young lady. Now, I've worked in the medical field for over, oh, gee, 30 years as a uh, in EMS, and I know a lot of times when we'd go on scene, we would see uh, seizure activity. A lot of times it would be confused with an anxiety attack. Now, do you run into a lot of that as far as uh, your listeners or your subscribers talking about that? Well, stress could definitely bring on a seizure. You know, when you um, when when you are under a lot of stress, you put stress on your body, you put stress on your organs. You know, not um, there's over 90% of the illnesses caused um, today are caused by stress, and you know, and you know, it, it, it's uh, actually you know, it makes sense that a, a seizure would put so much stress on your body that it would instigate a seizure. Um, you know, and uh, so you know, I actually wrote one book, I, and I talked about how to cope with epilepsy, and I talked about how positive thinking and how to cope with stress and different techniques on how to just deal with life in general, because life is so stressful for every individual, and you know, everybody goes through, you know, um, goes through a lot in life, and you know, when you have a seizure or you have a condition, you you really have to watch yourself and learn how to, you know, learn how to. Um, cope with the struggles of life and the cope with the stresses that and the obstacles that we all encounter every day. Okay, well now I know a lot of uh, folks that do have seizures are uh, medically prescribed. What Depakote, uh, probably Dilantin. Uh, now, did you ever take these medications? And if you did, do you still take them? Or now are you doing a herbal supplement that works just as well? And is there any? Da- I, go ahead. I'll go ahead. No, go ahead. Is there any Sorry. data? I, I know the herbal side isn't uh so much there's no data of course it's not through the fda i don't think it's regulated but you can sort of touch on all that if you want and just let uh, the listeners know if you are using an herbal what brand or what it would be and i'm sure it's through your uh your company as well right no i don't i don't sell any supplements um I just um, I, I write a lot of articles. And I have there's a, we have tons of writers and tons of professionals and doctors who write articles as, as well, giving their advice and and sharing their own experiences with um, with all different topics that they have um, a lot of experience in. But I do take um, I take uh, medication. I've taken medication since I was five, and it took um, it took a, probably into my twenties until they actually found a medication and that actually, you know, um, helped me um, tremendously. And it was uh, Keppra and Trileptol. And um, I would have to take a water pill as well called Diamox. And that, you know, the, they had found that a lot of my seizures occurred during menstruation and ovulation when the hormones would change in your body. And the stresses on the body would cause, and, and, the, uh, and the inflammation in the body would trigger seizures. So, um so, you know, I, I, take, I still take medicine to this day, but my seizures didn't become um, well controlled until I actually started to change my lifestyle, change the way I live, change the way I dealt with life. Um, I added different vitamins and supplements, and I noticed a humongous change, especially when I detoxed. Okay, now uh, what supplement, or is there any one particular uh, herbal site that you would recommend? I mean, like Herbalife, there are so many out there, or is it just a combination, or is that just... It's a, a, 
combination. I, I you know, it, it really, it depends on, on the person, you know, what, um, I, I use a cleansing, a body cleansing supplement that, um, that cleanses the body and I use, um, I would use, uh, you know, uh, colon cleanses and I would use, um, fiber in my diet and I would use milk thistle, which I found was very helpful. Um, and, um, that also helps with protecting the liver as well. And that was actually, um, that worked really well, um, as well. And then, um, I would take, um, there's an excellent uh, company called Ad- Advanced Research, and they actually had it's pe- um, potassium and magnesium, and um, I take those at night. And not only does it um, relax me and help me sleep, but it also, it helps the body as well. And the... Um, the one the one cleanser I really I really like taking and that works really well for me would have it's called Super Cleanse and that has always worked really well for me. Okay, now and uh, who's Super Cleanse? Uh, who's that through? What uh, herbal company? I believe that's through Nature Secret. I think makes that. Okay, very good. Now, when was the last time? Are you pretty well seizure free at this time, or do you you know one a month, two a month, or I, I mean I know you, there's no you can't really tell and you can't regulate a seizure, of course. But uh, so you started out, like you said, you were having quite a few of them. So where are we at now with that? I'm controlled right now, you know, as long as I, you know, but I can't say that I'm healed because, I, you know, if you if you don't take care of your body, you know, I, I will have a seizure. So I have to do my best every day to take care of my body, take care of the way I deal with stress, make sure I get enough of sleep. You know, I even notice, you know, I, you know, my job is on the computer, but, you know, if I'm on the computer too much, that could trigger a seizure as well. So I have to really regulate myself and, and you really see, you know, and for everybody that has epilepsy, I would say, you know, you have to, you have to understand your body, understand what you can and cannot do, or you have to limit yourself, you know, and you can still do things, but you might not be able to do it to extent with someone that doesn't have epilepsy. Okay. Well, I've got to ask this question. I'm sure you've been asked it quite a bit here lately too. How are you standing on the uh, THC and the uh, seizures? Well, THC and and the uh, CBD um, is been working well for many people, but you know they're still they're still doing many studies. There's still a lot to be learned about it. Um, it helps a, a lot of people. Um, I'm all for it. They just the FDA just re- approved um, a drug for um, specific types of seizures, and that has been working well. Um, and you know, and but I tell people all the time when you buy CBD or if you are considering, um, you know, if there are people who move to Arizona and they move to California and different states where it's it's approved, you know, to and they specifically move there because you know their child has epilepsy or somebody you know close to them has epilepsy. Um, you also have to realize that you know it, it's a lifestyle too, and and. It's also the THC and CBD is not just a healing process. You know, it, it's not going to heal the whole problem. It's about, you know, how you take care of your body. You also have to realize that um, if you take other medications, there could be interactions. You know, people don't realize, but, you know, and also if you take, med- let's say if you take a seizure medication, like for me, Keppra, if I take if I take CBD or if I had you know went to Arizona to try um, to try marijuana and see if it controls my seizure, that would decrease the potency of the Keppra. So what that could do is actually you know that could actually trigger seizures or cause problems with my epilepsy. So people have to really you know they have to understand what you know and think about what they're taking. Discuss it with their doctor. Make sure their their doctor is okay with it, and you know, and listen to what their doctor has to say because you know that's why the doctors are there. I have a great doctor that I you know I converse with, and you know they they're doing a lot of studies on CBD and and marijuana and NYU, and you know they're um you know but you know if I ever consider anything I I discuss it with him because I, you always have to make sure because there could be interactions as well. Well, I know there's a lot of, and by the way, I, I think you're married to a doctor, aren't you? I'm sorry? Aren't you, I believe you're married to a doctor as well, right? Yes, I am. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's what I thought. Uh, now, I know there's some type of, uh, well, I don't know about confusion, but maybe arguments, uh, pharmaceutical versus, uh, you know, the natural way. 
Uh, but I think we'd be dismissed if we didn't say that a lot of our pharmaceuticals, of course, come from natural ingredients. Uh, yeah. I'm on both sides of that fence. Now, I will tell you, and you're exactly right about your medications, uh, if I ever want to know anything about a medication, I usually will just call a pharmacist myself versus a doctor. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But uh, the other thing is, too, when we would go into residence, especially with our older clientele, it was absolutely amazing how many medications these people would be on. I don't know if the doctors would converse with other doctors, but they were taking things that would just counteract. It was almost ridiculous. Uh, we would take bags of pills to the emergency room with the patient. And yeah. uh, it's it's just, I don't know if it's the lack of communication. Um, of course, everybody, to me, the bottom line is always the dollar. But, uh, you know, uh, I did want to switch gears a little bit. You wanted to talk about, I think, uh, hair loss. Was that something? Yeah, you, you know. I've been doing a lot of um, research on hair loss, and, you know, there's over 35 million um, men in the United States and over 21 million women in the United States that suffer from hair loss. And, um, you know, any time that I, I write an article or I talk about hair loss, you know, so many people, you know, um, come to listen or they come to the articles to read because so many people are suffering from it, and they're, they're trying to figure out, a solution of how they can, you know, solve the problem because, you know, for a man it's more acceptable, but especially for a woman it, it, it's embarrassing when your hair starts spinning or you start losing your hair. So what have you uh, found that is helping that? Well, you know, I have found that there are different types of supplements that have been working really, really well. Um, I have found that green tea um, extract works really well, caffeine, uh, soft palmetto, uh, pumpkin seed oil, um, canine extract, biotin. Um, these are different um, supplements that actually block the DHT. Now, the DHT, for people don't, who understand hair loss, DHT um, is caused when testosterone enters the uh, antigen uh, receptors and it interacts with the uh, 5 alpha reductive. And that, that converts and turns into DHT. And then when the DHT hits your hair follicles, that's when you start experiencing hair loss or hair thinning when there's an overabundance. And, um, you know, a lot of people are suffering from this. And, you know, I had. Um, have lots of uh, friends now too that uh, are going through it and family members and uh, they've been struggling with it and I had found um, a great product it was uh, by Hair um, Restoration Laboratory and they carry um, uh, they carry a, um, a hair um, a condi- I believe it's a, a conditioner and a shampoo and they even have um, a regrowth treatment where they can actually help um, it helps it's a serum that you can rub into your, your hair with all those supplements I just mentioned to you, and they have a, a hair thickening for women who are their hair is thinning and it's becoming weak. Um, it helps thicken the hair and strengthen the hair, so it can promote hair, hair growth, and it can actually make the hair thicker and grow in spots of, of the head that it hasn't been growing in. So now there is a, a place where people can go to get some type of stats or uh... – I guess, um, you know, statements where people have used these products and they can, they'll actually testify that the fact that they are helping, uh, cause I, I don't mean to, you know, be, uh, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm a little bit on the devil's advocate side. I just am so skeptical about, you know, uh, just all this kind of stuff, Stacy. uh, right. You know, well, most definitely. Uh, you know, there's so, there's so much out there and, you know, what's to believe, what's not to believe, you know, and, um, you know, I, even my husband had struggled with hair loss and, you know, he tried many things out there and he wasn't having any, um, any, uh, any, any positive, um, results. And I actually gave him this stuff because I started using it. I started trying it and my hair, I went to my hairdresser and she said, Stacy, your hair has never been any thicker. She goes, what are you using? And I laughed, you know, and that's when I was talking about it because, you know, it's crazy. But, you know, if, if certain supplements are combined together, it could actually do um, a lot of good for your hair because your hair is a protein. And, um, you know, and your hair needs protein and your hair needs certain supplements in order to stay strong and to, to block, you know, DHT, which causes hair loss and hair thinning in many people. I mean, it, it, may, it makes sense. Uh, 
if I can, you mentioned something about, uh, you, I heard you mentioned sleep earlier. I know a lot of people out here, a lot of listeners, and, and me included, not anymore, but at one time took Ambien. Very dangerous drug, I believe. But uh, Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but is there anything you could recommend to help people sleep uh, outside of maybe the melatonin? Is there anything out there for that? Oh, you know, the um, potassium magnesium works great. Um, cause I always, as I got older, I, you know, I always suffered from a lack of sleep and I always continuously, you know, at nighttime, I'm the type of person, I'm always thinking about the next thing I got to do. And I would think about the next day I got to do this, I got to do this. And I would toss and turn to like five in the morning. I would have such difficult time sleeping. And I went to my herbalist and I was talking to him one day about it. And he said to try, um, 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 Patesium, I, I got my tip, my tongue tied, and magnesium, and um, you know that he actually recommended the advanced research to me. The um, and I had tried that. And I I personally, he told me that for me personally, I I, I take uh, a few of them at nighttime, and it works really well. I see my body start to calm down, to to relax. Um, and then I end up, um, I'm able to fall asleep. I tried the melatonin for a while and it worked in the beginning, but then I saw that it, 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 it started to, the, it, it started to wear off and it wasn't working as well. And, um, you know, it, there, um, there are many different, um, supplements, you know, you could try, but then I found, I found, um, that a lot of them would actually, um, make me feel tired the next day and that's what I didn't want. I, I, uh, I didn't want to feel tired the next day because it defeats the whole purpose. If you're trying to get a good night's sleep and you're trying all these different things and then you end up um, feeling tired the next day, then you can't, you can't, um, you know, you, you can't uh, operate the way you and accomplish the things you need. You know, I tried passion flower, and that that relaxed relaxed me and helped me a lot. But I also found that you have to be careful. It works, but if you take too much, you will be very tired the next day. So you have to, if you want to try the passion flower, um, you could try it. But just make sure that you're aware that taking too much could make you tired. And also, you know, what I have done, too, is lavender. I rub a little lavender on me. Um, I have, like, a little roll-on lavender, and I put it on my, my skin, and I roll it on my arms, and I put a little bit, I have a spray, and I put a little bit on my pillow, and I found that that actually helps, too. Wow. Uh, I do want to mention once again, because I did ask Stacy just a little bit ago, if uh, there was, a, was, I mentioned, I think her company, she said she has nothing to do with selling these products. So there again, I, I think it's uh, something that needs to be uh, restated that she doesn't have a, a dog in this fight as far as making money, this and that. So it, it, so you don't really push one brand versus another. You just tell people to try to look more at the natural way of doing things and uh, not so much always pharmaceutical, even though we're not saying don't take what your doctor prescribes. Am I right. okay? Sort of close on that. Okay. Yeah, I don't, I don't, um, I don't sell any of the vitamins that I was talking about with you and the supplements and stuff like that. I don't, you know, my website is all about articles and it's all about teaching and you know that's how I got started in the beginning. You know, I was trying to help myself and then you know through that so many people inquired and asked me for help and then I started to actually start writing articles and I wrote a book called The Complete Herbal Guide. It's actually 500 pages of um, it talks about. You know, I wrote that probably like six, seven years ago, and it talks about all the different vitamins and supplements and different ways naturally that you could actually heal your body. Um, you know, and I talk about you know, to teach people. And also, I, you know, what I wanted to do, just like we were talking about now, I wanted to teach people about the precautions, about what it is, how it, how it originated, you know, you know, what can happen when you take it, all the things that it's good for, all the things it's not good for. So I wanted to, you know, help someone one that really is interested in trying to heal their bodies, trying to, you know, trying the natural way, but they, you know, they don't know a lot about supplements and they want to, you know, they want to learn about it. And so I, I created the, um, the complete herbal life for that, um, reason. Well, anybody that goes to your website can tell that you've been a very, very busy lady. You have got <laughs> so much information out here. Okay. Here's another big hundred thousand dollar question. 
Is there any herbal supplement out there that truly helps for anybody trying to lose weight? Um, you know, I when I when when I take um, different types of um, supplements, you know, I, I find that there are there are um, things out there that will help um, that, uh, your, help boost your metabolism. And there are things out there that will actually, I take a tea that actually, you know, in the morning and it decreases, it decreases your, um, uh, I buy it in David's tea actually, and it decreases your appetite. And I also found that eating a banana fills you in the morning and, you know, and it also boosts you, you know, but you can't eat it too many times. Like I wouldn't say eat a banana every day because it has a lot of sugar. It's 100 calories and it's, it's a lot of sugar. But bananas fill you up, you know. If you're going to go out, sometimes I would go out with my husband to dinner with some friends. I eat a banana before I go because I know it's going to fill me up. I'm not going to eat as much as I normally would, as silly as it sounds. And, um, you know, and there are, there's there's things out there that you can, you can do for those two reasons. But I haven't found anything specifically that helps you lose weight, the magic pill. It's really about lifestyle. You know, some people call it a diet. I call it a lifestyle change because you really have to cut your portions down. You have to really... Um, think about, you know, what you're eating. The, the problem in the U.S. is that we have been so accustomed to these large portions and we eat till we're full. And sometimes you have to really, you know, count your calories a little bit in your head naturally and you have to think, okay, you know, I'm eating, I'm eating eggs and maybe some spinach in the morning or I'm having, you know, some oatmeal or this or that and then, you know, for lunch I'll have this and this, you know, and give yourself a plan that's healthy, you know, because, you know, portions, healthy foods, not golden in processed foods, you know. I have a lots of friends that, you know, will make stuff the day before and they'll freeze stuff. They'll bring it, you know, the next day with them to work or they'll bring it, you know, or they'll they'll have the food prepared. And, you know, I've known people, I have a couple of friends. I have one friend, it was her and her husband both went on a diet and it wasn't, they didn't try any magic pill. What they did was they changed their food and they changed their portions. One lost 30 pounds, one lost 60 pounds. Her husband lost 60, she lost 30, and she, she's still going. She's still losing. And, you know, I have, you know, my husband did the same thing. He incorporates exercise with, with um, healthy eating, and my husband lost over 40 pounds. And, you know, and with the exercise, he's, he's, uh, he cut down with a lot of inches. And you have to exercise. You don't have to exercise like a, like a nut, but at least 15 minutes minimum you know, to, you know, to whatever you can handle, you know, and do things that, you know, you, you can, you know, you start slow and you work your way up. But those are really the, the ways to actually lose weight, and, and you'll definitely see a change. Well, yeah, I was talking to a surgeon of, of mine uh, just recently, and he was telling me, he said, uh, Dean, you got to get some weight off. I uh, had a knee replaced. I'm a little older than probably you are, Stacy. Uh, quite a bit probably older <laughs> than you are. But anyway, uh, <laughs> He told me, he said, I said, well, Doc, you know, how do I do that? I'm sort of immobile now. And he said, hey, Dean, it's not about the exercise anymore. He said, it's what you eat. It's 80% of what you eat. And I I won't lie to you. I said, Doc, I'm going to call bullshit. He said, Dean, it's not. (laughs) He said, the stats are in. It's what you eat. They are in, actually. They are because I had I had did a book review years ago and I still remember the book to this day. I can't remember the title off the top of my head, but it's on my website because I actually interviewed the guy and I was so impressed with his book. But he was a scientist. His father and his mother were a scientist, and he wrote a book about how you could lose weight without exercise. And it was all about what you eat. And it was all about he focused on the greens. If you can take out the processed foods and focus more on incorporating more greens and healthy foods and the, and foods that are packed with vitamins and nutrients and protein, you will see a, a decrease in your diet. Well, that's fantastic. Uh, Stacy. is there anything that uh, you might want to, you know, add on or – Talk about it a little bit more, or is there? I definitely want you to mention how people can get a hold of you if they want more information. Uh, that alone could maybe take about ten minutes. You have so many articles. You've done so much work. You are to be commended, and uh, I can tell you have. Uh, looks like you've got fourteen thousand followers uh, on one side, uh, six thousand on Facebook. Uh, 
and 3.6 million readers it looks like you've had. So you have been a busy lady. Tell the people once again if they want more information, how to get a hold of you, and uh, and if you want to mention anything you want to mention. Well, they, you know, on the completeherbalguide.com, you can go there and you can, you know, if you want to contact me, you can contact me on the contact page and I will get back to you if you have any questions, you know, I will try my very best. I'm not a doctor, but, you know, if I could, you know, give you some advice or guide you to a, a better way, you know, I, I most certainly will. Um, on my website, like on Facebook, on Twitter, on Pinterest, we actually are very proud. We're almost, we're, we're close to 300,000, um, you know, readers monthly on, on Pinterest. And, you know, if you go there, you'll get our latest articles, you know, our latest information. Um, we have a lot of, uh, professionals who write articles that help, you know, and, and guide people, you know, um, and kind of, you know, we even, we put a little button on the top of our website called start here because so many people want to be healthy, but they just don't know where to begin. It's like a lost cause. It's like, oh my God, you know, my life is not, you know, health wise, I'm not going in the right direction, but. I don't know where to begin because there's so many things I want to tap on. And so, you know, our website has, like, the, the start here, and it just takes you to, like, a couple important, you know, areas of the website that you need to focus on, like your eating and your health. And, you know, and we have a whole section just for recipes where people can go and, you know, and we have different ideas for different recipes and smoothies and different drinks and stuff like that. And we actually do... We'll, we'll, we'll do, like, um, reviews on, on products and, you know, uh, we'll have people give their advice and, and their thoughts about a product it, it, that they tried and that they like or don't like. So, it's um, you know, we have a lot of different things on the website to offer. And, you know, you can contact, even if you contact, um, I have people contacting me on the social networks. And, I you know, if I see a message, I'll try to get back to them. Well, Stacy that sounds absolutely awesome. Now, I also see that... Uh... You are a regular writer for the Huffington Post as well, is that right? I write for the Huffington Post, and I, I write for the um, uh, for uh, many many different artic, um, uh, many different um, magazines and and, and uh, websites like Thrive Global. I, I met Ariana Huffington a couple of years back, and we got into a conversation, and she was so impressed that she had me. Um, she gave me a couple of her columns, and uh, you know, I write regularly for her. And um, and I, I do a lot of different writing for different magazines. And if people want to, you know, approach me, and I'd be happy to, you know, on a specific topic, I'd be happy to write up an article on that too. Okay. Well, Stacy, is there anything you want to say in closing? I so much appreciate you for coming on today. And you keep up the good work. You're doing a fantastic job. And I'm sure uh, our listeners will be in touch. Uh, anything you want to say in closing? Um, you know, I, I can't think of anything off the top of my head, but thank you so much for having me. I appreciate, you know, this conversation that we had, and it was, uh, you know, I had a great time um, speaking with you and tapping on to all these topics. Once again, I want to thank you, Stacy, for coming on Loudmouth today. We'll also be airing this uh, complete interview on WLOU Radio. We're going to kick that off uh, in about a week from now, so make sure and stay tuned for that. In the meantime, you can go to loudmouthdean.com and Hear the complete interview with Stacy. If you'd like more information, it's the Complete Herbal Guide, a natural healing, health, and well-being website. Thanks again, Stacy, and thank you for listening to Loudmouth. In the meantime, take care. T-Rex, bang a gong.